Throughout this video, we'll be providing you with detailed information on sampling, key points you need to be aware of to ensure your monitoring is completed correctly, and how to effectively pack your coolers to ensure bottles remain intact throughout the shipping process. It's highly recommended that you read over all instructions thoroughly prior to sampling. After choosing your sampling location and setting your cooler down, grab the provided liner and wrap it around the cooler. This will make for an easier transition later on after the sampling bottles have been loaded into the cooler. Samples should be collected at entry points to the distribution system. Make sure you have all the supplies to complete the sampling process, including sampling bottles, ice, bubble wrap, and your chain of custody form. Before touching any sampling bottles, put on the powderless nitrile gloves provided. You'll be wearing these during all sampling steps. Latex gloves are not an acceptable substitute. To avoid confusion, it's a good idea to organize the sampling bottles prior to collection. It's important to remember that bottles may contain chemical preservatives, so avoid skin contact. Flush the cold water sampling line approximately 10 to 15 minutes prior to sampling. If your sampling point has a faucet with an aerator, it is recommended that the aerator be removed prior to collection. Be sure to slow the water stream before collection. After you've slowed the water stream, remove the lid from the sampling bottle and fill to the neck. Both PFAS methods, EPA 533 and EPA 537.1, requires the collection of field reagent blank, also known as FRB. FRBs are simply samples of clean water that are handled in the field. The purpose of a field blank is to detect on-site contamination in sample handling. There will be an FRB per sample point. Locate the field reagent blank bottle and the unpreserved reagent water, both joined by a rubber band. There will be a set for both PFAS methods. Open both containers and proceed to transfer the contents of the unpreserved reagent water container into the field reagent blank bottle. Field blanks must be listed on the chain of custody form. Both the empty reagent water container and the filled field reagent water container must be returned to the laboratory. You may now repeat this step for the other bottles. Take a moment to indicate the sampling date, time, and site on the bottle labels and the enclosed chain of custody form. Please do not use a permanent or felt tip marker during this step. Information on the COC and the labels must match to be complete. Place the sample and FRB bottles into the liner bag. Be sure to put wet ice around the bottles and then additional wet ice on top of the bottles to fill the cooler almost to the top. Gather the liner bag and twist it tightly, then tuck it into the side. Place a layer of bubble wrap across the top to keep the bottles and wet ice in place. From there, you'll put the COC in a sealed plastic bag on top of the bubble wrap. Close the cooler and seal with tape. 